And I said, no. Yeah. And then I thought afterwards, yeah, I suppose we ought to really. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Doc House Rugby Show. David and myself today are joined by writer and author of rugby league books from like the Tough Season trilogy. He's from over the dark side of the Pennines. He's a Yorkshire man. It's Mr. Chris Berry. Welcome to the show, Chris. Now then, Keith, how are you? All right. Good to see you both, you and David. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show. Um, you've got three great books out, the, the rugby league crime thrillers. Mm. So how do them two come together? Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? Well, how it came about was I, I've read a lot of crime thrillers over a lot of years and I'm a rugby league fan. So it's a combination and I'm a writer. So it's all those, those three things coming together. I'd always loved reading Dick Francis novels, you know, horse racing, crime thrillers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if he can do it for horse racing, then I'm sure there should be something for rugby league. Now, you might think, oh, well, yeah, it, it sort of, brings down your marketplace a bit for actually, you know, what you're going to hit. But at least then it becomes a target market in a way that's niche for people who do like rugby league and also like crime thrillers. And there are loads of people like that. I've just been on with uh, Colin Armstrong today, who used to play for Hull KR, because I'm a Hull KR fan. Um, and uh, I was on with Colin today, and he said he's into crime thrillers, so I'm sending him some books as well, you know. So it's kind of like... I do a deal for the Rovers fans, you see, you know, the Rovers, ex Rovers player. And actually, to be fair, any any ex rugby league player, professional rugby league player that, that that comes on to me, I usually say, yeah, okay, I'll do them, at, you know, all three for 20 quid or whatever, you know. So it's kind of a neat deal for them because it gets rid of the postage. I, I take care of the postage bit. But it was basically because I thought there wasn't much. As a writer, I like writing stories. I write autobiographies on people and things like that as well. But I like writing stories. And so these are character-based kind of things. So you've got, if you remember, there was only really one book as you were growing up that was a proper novel about rugby league. And that was David Story's This Sporting Life that was yeah. made into a film in 1962, right, with Richard Everything. Harris. It's very gritty. You know, it's very, you know, hard. Uh, is is the thing like Richard Harris gets his teeth bashed out within about the first few minutes of it or whatever you know so and I wanted something a bit different I wanted something a bit more that people could really really enjoy as a crime thriller book so in my books there's like murders and all sorts of stuff going on yeah the main character is this character called Greg Duggan uh, and he's the guy that uh, uh, he gets put into all sorts of spots so if you like, in the first book, it's set in the north of England. It's set, and I've made sure it's Pennines rather than Yorkshire or Lancashire, right? Because although I, yeah, although I want to appeal to I want to appeal to everybody. I thought, what do I do? I mean, I've made up all the names of the towns, made up all the names of the clubs, made up all the names of the players. So it's not real people. There might be the odd friend of mine that I've thrown into it or whatever. Just for a laugh or whatever, you know, but but it's uh, it's quite quite good fun, quite good fun for it. It's quite funny actually. It's one one of my best friends from years ago that I haven't seen for donkey's years. Don't even know whether he's still alive, bless him. Um, but I went to school with him, like, uh, and I put him and I put him in as a randy referee. <laughs> so, so there's it's, it's, it's just one little side issues of the thing. It's not it's not a main thing of the thing, but this this side stories to keep people interested. Oh yeah, all sorts of little things, you know that you know because you've got to use. I mean, when I was first coming up with uh, these, were my first my tough season was my first novel that was out in 2019. I'd been playing with it for a, quite a few years beforehand before I got to actually do it and a publisher, um, and then. I remember, you know, playing with it. And I remember telling uh, this author that I'd met through my, uh, you know, day, my, my main sort of job is writing for the Yorkshire Post every week um, about farming and rural things. And uh, I'd been out with this lady who said she'd written these romantic historical fiction as well. And uh, she said about my book, she said, has it got any sex in it? <laughs> and I said, no. And then I thought afterwards, yeah, I suppose we ought to really. So, so I've got, so I've got kind of 
bits that will interest everybody. This, and this character, Greg Duggan, gets he's it's a bit like if you remember Bruce Willis at the start of a Die Hard movie, yeah. he's always down on his luck, right? There's always something's gone wrong. And 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 Greg's a bit like that. There's things that he's done wrong or whatever, or he's got wrong. Uh, but he's still got to win matches with with whoever he's with. So you find him in this first book. I won't give everything away, but you find him in this first book playing for a bottom of the professional code side. So in other words, bottom of what would be League One now, right? Uh, and then the the club, you know, has to finish because uh, there's an edict. Like rugby league always comes up with things, doesn't it? Dur- either during the season or at the start of the season, or near the end of the season to make sure that clubs stay up or whatever they don't, you know. Keith Lee Cougars, I remember what happened to them years ago, you know, when they were meant to be going up and it never happened, you know. Um, and they still rankle about it now, I'm sure. Even amazing, now, yeah, but the top of the league at the moment, they're looking very strong for this season. Absolutely right, that's right, yeah, yeah. Well, they've got the same guys back in at the, at the management positions, you see, as they had then. Uh, so and they've come back to it, you know. So, um, but but it was it's those kind of shenanigans that I like to play with, you know, all those things that we as fans think to ourselves, oh, you know, I'm sure that's going on at board level that shouldn't be going on, or this is why they're doing it this way. So, there's all sorts of things that rugby league fans will absolutely love when they read it, and they'll have a chuckle about, about what I've done with. You know characters. You know, so so does he does he go on like the the Chris Vogler esque style? Is it is it the hero's journey that he travels? The this yeah character? yeah yeah yeah, and 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 lots of things happen to Greg. You know, so I, I won't give away everything, but there's a lot of action. If you're a, if you're a fella or you're a woman, either gender, whatever, you're gonna absolutely love what happens with with Greg. And he's kind of, well, you might not love everything that happens to him, you know, <laughs> but you might love, you know, if it's you like on the journey with him. Yeah, absolutely right. You know, <laughs> so it's typical what what a lot of rugby league players, a lot of people will see elements of certain players, maybe over the years, you know. So it reflects life and you go on the journey with him by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. And but I include lots of other characters as well, and then and it's it's kind of like there's a lot of rugby league action in the in the books as well, but that's not. If you were just a crime thriller reader, you would still get a lot out of it as well. Uh, but then, because it is rugby league, I use action of rugby league games through it as well. And because I've listened to a lot of you know BBC radio commentators over the years, whether it be on Humber side, Merseyside, wherever, it, whichever one it is. Um, I've, I've picked up, you know, and people will notice certain little phrases that are used, you know, from certain commentators over the years, and they'll, they'll pick up on that. So sometimes, uh, when I've when I then use TV commentaries for it, for like mm. Eddie and Steve O from years are gone now as well, um, and and from others as well, you know, they'll see again. Sometimes I'm watching I'm watching Sky, and I'm listening to a commentary. And I think. What a great line that was! I might, I'll just, I'll just write that one down. I'll just, use that one. I'll use that one. <laughs> I'll use that one. That'll come in. <laughs> Sounds good. So, tell me a bit more about the latest book. It, it involves the World Cup, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And 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 if it hadn't have been for the pandemic last year, and if it hadn't have been for you know the um, the way things happened as a result of it, my book would have been released at exactly the same time as a World Cup, which is the idea. For doing it in the first place, I thought that'd be good. I'll take him because he's had a journey now. Greg was he played for in the first book, he played uh, for a low league club and he'd always stayed with him. He was a garage mechanic, right? right. And then, and then in the uh, second book, he's in Lanzarote, right? I'll tell you more about that. And then the third book, right, he's now in Australia and he, he's, he's, he's got from there to Super League. He went to this Lanzarote club was a made-up club, you know, and typically might have been a few backhanders going on to make sure that the club got who would put a, who would put a rugby league team in Lanzarote, All right? Only people that want to have the holidays there, you know. Yeah. So anyhow, 
Um, then he's got up to Super League with them and he's become a, you know, he's, he was always a good player, but now he's been seen by the right people, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then he's down on his luck when you start off with Tough World, the latest one. And he has to, and he gets his his parents live in Australia. They'd emigrated to Australia years before, and uh, so I thought he's got something that's happening that means he's. I'm trying not to give the game away, but he's, he's got something that's happening that's that's in us that's going on in Australia that means he's got to be in Australia. Just so happens that's where the World Cup is. He's not been selected because he's been injured for part of the season, right? And therefore, he's only been getting back to full fitness and the like, so he's not been selected. But then England has an absolute crisis, right, at the start of, in the friendlies that they're playing before the main tournament. Right? And I've got him playing in Alice Springs, of all places, you know, in one of the places, you know. So it's the it's the hottest day ever or whatever, you know. Can you imagine all the England players melting, you know. So, yeah. And then I take him out to Vanuatu, and I don't know, you guys, do you, do you know where Vanuatu is by any chance? No. no. It's it's a, it, I, di- I didn't know until my son lives in Australia. That's the reason why I was able to set it there, because I knew all the places. Uh, I've been over to see him a few times and knew a lot of the things that go on there, like there's a blues, fe- a blues festival, big music festival over there at Byron Bay. So I fitted that into the whole thing as well. I know where all the wine regions are, of course, and that as well. So I've fitted that into it as well. I've been to Sydney, I've been to Brisbane. So it's all down that eastern seaboard. Uh, but also when we went there last time to see Russ, who owns a wine shop now, my son, out that way, um, he, he, we'd gone over to see him and he said, uh, we're going to go 1,700 miles now that you've gone here, 11,000 miles. And he took us to, we went to Vanuatu, which is an archipelago of about 80 islands, 1,700 miles east of Australia. So think Fiji and that kind of thing. Fiji is a bit further on from there, but 1,700 miles east of Australia. And, and he booked us into this place called Breakers Resort, which is like beach huts actually on the beach, you know, wicker, not wicker things, but you know what I mean, yeah. um, and a hotel main building as well. And I thought that would be a great place. You know, like emerging nations that get through to part of the World Cup and they're always the noddy side in the World Cup, you know, in a way, you know, that people think. And Vanuatu are in it um, and they play some games. They get to host some games uh, in the World Cup. And so it's only a very small ground. I don't know where the ground is. I've seen it, you know. So I was able to do things with it. I checked out where Vanuatu are in the rugby league echelons. They're about number 32 or something like that in the world, you know, which means they're right near the bottom. They have won a couple of games, right, against neighbouring islands or whatever, you know. Well, that's about it. I think IU, IU, I think there's one called, begins with an I or something or whatever, only four letters to it. I can't remember the name of it now. But um, they have won a couple of games. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun? If, the, if England were in their group. So they had to play him. So Greg has to, Greg gets involved. He's not fully back to fitness. He's still aiming to be. And so he's used, you know, I won't say much more, but there. But then there's all sorts of things that go on on the island of Vanuatu. And it's like there's some tribal things that are still going on there, right? It's not like they're all dressed with grass skirts or all like that, but they still have their tribal instincts in their little villages. And there's all sorts of political shenanigans, quite appropriate to what's happening today. Yeah. Right? Uh, quite a lot of political shenanigans, but these are a bit... Boris didn't exactly... He might have got knifed last night, but he didn't get... He didn't get something else happen to him that might happen in the book. <laughs> Feels like a bit of a teaser, though. Yeah, a teaser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that name. It's a fantastic name. So, yeah. um, following on from this, then, will there be a fourth book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on with the fourth one at the moment. Um, and it's going to be called... That's Tough Season, The French Connection. So, so far, I've done, like, north of England. Then I've done uh, Lanzarote. Then I've done Australia and Vanuatu. Next one, France. And again, using the kind of things that fans will absolutely, I think, love. Because you know what it's like? It's like 
a love-hate relationship that a lot of fans are having with French Rugby League now at the moment is the fact that they think to themselves that, you know, it's all very well, but they've got two sides in Super League now. What happens if they get a third? Well, guess what? What's in this book? <laughs> and, but then there's a lot of shenanigans as well that go on that went on years ago. There's a famous book by a guy called Mike Rylance about French Rugby League. The Forbidden Game, is it? That's it. And it's about how it start, how it started and how it then got knocked, right, uh, by people who, by union people. So guess what? There's a, there might just be a little, there might just be a little something in that, that's got that it's kind of thing. Maybe. A bit of tension between the codes. It sounds interesting. I can't wait to uh, to read that one as well. Where can people find your books, Chris? Yeah, they're uh, they're in Waterstones. I mean, what what you've got to be careful of with when you say Waterstones or any bookshop these days is that there are so many books about that. You know, if if people aren't used to having it ordered uh, into their into their bookstores, then then they don't have it. But they can get it because it's got the full uh, what they call ISBN numbers and the they're fully recorded through everything else. They can get it through any Waterstones. In fact, I do signings in Waterstones all around the north of England at the moment. I did one in Warrington a couple of weeks ago. I'm in Hull this week. Uh, uh, I know it's the, you know, it's the big weekend, you know, up in Newcastle this weekend, magic weekend, but uh, I'm doing a signing in Hull on Saturday. Um, I've got another one lined up for Bradford and uh, I've done Wigan before now. St. Helens hasn't got a, it's got two little shops at the moment. It hasn't got a Waterstones. No, it's not got a Waterstones. It's got two independent books. It's, it's, in fact, it's, there's a new bookstore just opened, a new independent called the bookstore on, I think it's on Bridge Street. That's it. Yeah, I've been I've been in touch with them and I was trying to sort something out with them as well to come and do a signing there too. Uh, so so St. Helens as well. Um, and then cover wherever. I'd go to Cumbria and do a signing. It's up there as well because I'm well aware that, you know, still a big heartland as well. Uh, so I'm keen to, do, keen to do that. Also, though, that everybody can get it on Amazon. Most people buy books on Amazon these days. It is available as the book in the book format. They're all available like so, you know. Um, but they're also all available on, on Kindle uh, as well. You know, so if people do want Kindle, uh, then that's fine. Um, you know, you know what it is. But I'm, I'm a, I like a book. I like holding a book. I like opening a book. And Me too. And to be honest, as a, as a writer, you know, you'd... <laughs> You earn more out of the books than you do out of the Kindle, you know, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you that for a fact. Uh, but, but um, yeah, it, it reverb that way. Also, my publisher, Great Northern Books, that can get it from Great Northern Books anyway. And also me. And if people just want to check me out all the time and look on the Facebook and check out what I'm doing, because I play as a singer, a guitarist with my own band. I play all over. We were doing a big festival last week called Staxtonbury in North Yorkshire. Um, where there's about 7,000 we were playing in front of last week. and uh, But then equally well, I play as a solo act and I'll play in a bar to about 20 people or whatever, which I did last night, you know, oh, okay. uh, in Otley. Um, so I'll, I'll go out and do anything really on the... On, on the... What sort of music do you play then, Chris? I play all sorts of covers. I mean, I do write my own stuff as well. I had my own album out as well just three or four years ago now called Long Hard Road. All my own stuff on it, all fully recorded full band stuff using great session musicians like snake davis uh sax player with take that eurythmics uh lisa stansfield for your your guys you know um and then um but I, we play a lot of covers so we'll play i'm i'm the sort of guy that gets the party started or gets it going you know i want to i want to do uh, when we were playing the other day we start on, on main stage. We started with Spirit in the Sky because it gets everybody clapping along. Get in, go. Get them on to I'm a Believer. Uh, do Crazy Little Thing Called Love. Do Summer of 69. Then I've All Right Now as a biggie sort of rock number. Then go into Sweet Caroline. And then at the end, for, and we had a few more in between, at the end, finish with Dakota, Stereophonics, and Mr. Bright, Mr. Really? Bright Side. And, and you've got the place rocking. And we had the place absolutely rocking. It was great fun, you know. Well, we need to look out. We need to get a lunch one of those, Keith. That sounds like a good night out. So let's yeah, yeah. get you know, over this way sometime. We'll definitely come along. And if you're doing a book signing over this way, please let us know. We'll come down to that. We can do some recording interviews as you're doing those book signings as well. Sure. The best of luck with the books. Fabulous. 
heard some brilliant feedback on them and everyone who I've spoken to has really enjoyed them. Uh, good luck with the next book coming along and we look forward to uh, catching up with you again very soon, Chris. Cheers, fellas. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Chris Berry and I've just been on the Dock House Rugby Show talking about my books, Tough Season, Tough Season in the Sun and Tough World. Make sure you get them from either Amazon, Waterstones or wherever you're buying from. Come on to my Facebook page if you like. But what you must do, if you like this and you want to be with it forever, the Dockhouse Rugby Show, like and subscribe right now.